Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at a problem that gives us uh, an equation of a line, and then it's going to ask us to do certain things. Solve for y, get it in y equals mx plus b form, and then analyze it. So this is uh, CPM course 3, section 6.1.4, number 6-41. So Juan thinks that the graph of 6x plus 12 Six, excuse me, 6y plus 12x equals 4 is a line, okay? So that's what Juan thinks. Juan is right, but let's talk about why he's right. So if we, it first says solve Juan's equation for y. That means take this 6y plus 12x equals 4 and do the operations to get that y all alone, right? That's what I want to do. So remember to get the operations to eliminate, you want to get everything all by, you want to get Y by itself. So I've got to get rid of the 12X. I got to get rid of the six to get that Y alone. So what I tend to do is always try to isolate the variable term first, meaning get that six Y by itself first. So to do that though, I've got to get rid of the 12X. So the opposite of 12X, it's a plus 12X. The inverse operation is minus 12X, right? You're trying to make this, with, with operations go away. So a positive 12x, a negative 12x, that goes away. But to legally do it, right, you do what you do to one side of an equation. That's why I draw this line to show the two sides you do to the other side. So on this side as well, I've got to do minus 12x. So here's what I have so far. I have 6y, because that's all that's left over here, is equal to, and I usually put my variable term first, negative 12x plus 4, right? Those can't combine. You can't add a 4 and a negative 12x because one has an X, the other one's a constant. This is a variable term, that's a constant, cannot be added, okay? So far, so good. Now I gotta get this Y all by itself. So that means gotta get rid of the six. What is the six doing to the Y? The six is being multiplied to the Y. So the inverse operation, the opposite operation is divide. So I divide by six, six divided by six goes away. It's a one, that's what I want. I want one Y. So, but what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And when you're, when this case, I have to divide six into each term. So not just over one of the terms, but each term. So I have negative 12 divided by six. That gives me negative two. So it's negative two X plus, and then four over six. Well, four doesn't divide by six evenly. So I leave it like a fraction, but simplify if possible. And I can divide top and bottom by two. I would have it to be two thirds. So here's my equation so far y is equal to negative 2x plus 2 thirds it asks is this linear well yes it is and how do we know because and it says is this graph of a line and 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 yes it is right and how do i know because y equals mx plus b is the form of a line where what's true b represents the y-intercept Right. And M represents the growth or the growth rate or the slope. It's the slope. It's that. So we know if I have an equation in this form, it's a line. It will be linear. And a, a line is basically showing all the points that all the coordinates that make this equation true. So C, what, is, what are the pattern of growth in the y-intercept? Well, if I'm in this form and I know this is true, the number in front of the X, that negative two is the growth. So the pattern of growth is negative two, right? And then the Y intercept is always the number that's the constant. So plus two thirds. So the Y intercept, and remember, a well, Y intercept is a point. It's where the X equals zero. So it's zero comma two thirds. So the Y intercept is zero comma two thirds. That's the place where it crosses the Y axis. There we go.